Hello to you, welcome back in to Blood Bowl 3 Season Finals. A uh, very short break because we're right back in the thick of things here with our last lower bracket round three matchup coming away very, very soon here. Uh, let me ask you guys as well, you know, Jimmy, uh, Andy, you, we're so, it's so great to have you both here on, on the stream because your, your 20 plus years, both experience uh, and the wonderful thing that is Blood Bowl pays dividends. You can hear it on the cast as well, the analysis and such. But for, the, for those viewers who are kind of brand new, let's just talk about races for a second here when it comes to, is it humans versus uh, Skavens we have coming up here? Um, can I ask you like the, the positives and negatives very quickly for those kind of like, you know, uh, uh, viewers here versus, you know, with Cal Troop versus Crystal Hunter coming up here. Uh, Andy, kick us off here. Uh, take the humans for us. Uh, the good things about the race, the, 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 you know, the, the, the negatives as well. Uh, what makes them uh, a good and, and a bad team? So the, the in the tournament version, you're going to be able to have three or four guard, you're going to have a, a mighty blow and you'll have a tackle, which is countering a lot of what the Skaven are very good at, which is Jimmy, I'm sure, will cover in a minute. But you, you've got the counters there. What are they bad at? Well, I think that they are in an agility three team, so you can you know, fail a one in nine at any point, uh, And that is probably your biggest concern. But I, I, I should have also covered they're cheap, so you've got a lot of, a lot of them and they're also pretty quick. So. They're, they're a strong team. They're a very good team. They're a strong team. But, this, but Skaven, what do they have in their locker here, Jimmy? Uh, funnily enough, the Skaven are like a better team than, than humans, I think, overall in like leagues and stuff and ladder. But in this situation, they're just not really getting enough skills. Uh, one of the advantages of humans is so many starting skills and, and Skaven don't really get them. You can eventually build gutters into amazing players but with just one or, one or two skills. You know, they, they don't really get enough, uh, but they're, you know, they're still super fast and super agile. The gutter runners are like, you know, one of the best players in the game. So, so they, they do have the gutter runners going for them and what Crystal Hunter has going for him in particular is he's just got massive experience. He's played thousands of games with Skaven and, he, you know, he loves them. And he's got his own particular style with them, very aggressive, hyper aggressive with them. Yeah. So he, that that's as much as big a factor as the race itself, really. All right. Well, let's actually take a look at their, their, the breakdown of their teams they're taking into this as well here. Uh, we'll start with uh, Cool Troop here. Um, you can see 13 players, as uh, as you said there, Andy, and uh, three rerolls. I mean, the, the Apothecary. I mean, what what do you th what do you think is going to be a, a big factor here in terms of skills and such as well? So the rostered players number four and five probably are going to be the guys that really define whether this works or not, because the Mighty Blow is going to be picking on the line rats and trying to limit down and get rid of some numbers. And when he can, he'll then use the Tackle Blitzer to knock over the gutters. We saw that earlier in the cast today, but not all four gutter runners have got defensive skills like Block or Wrestle. So there are some easy pickings if you can get at them. And I think we'll see that in the middle and the end of the match where the Tackle Blitzer has a bit more free freedom to run around and do stuff. I mean, funny you should say that, Andy. There's there's not even four gutter runners on on Crystal's team. He's only got three. He's got he's got three in a thrower, and uh, there's a block one, a wrestle one, and a and a skillless one. So yeah, they, you know, any any gutter that goes down is is a nightmare for Crystal. He's really got to protect them well. He's got to tackle to, to you know to try and blitz key pieces. In this case, the uh, just the catcher, only one catcher. Surprisingly, on Cold Troop's team, one guard. The Rat Ogre might roll well. Um, you can see that just how bar how bare bones it looks. It's 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 not a great package for them. But you know, Chunt is a great player, and he's done great to get them this far, and he gets the most out of them. And, and you know, that's a big, really big part of the game is is just how much he's going to get out of these guys. But uh, humans can be a bit of a nightmare for Skaven. It's just so fast that themselves. Yeah, I mean, I mean, both players as well. I've, I've, I've you know played out their skins the last you know the last round, particularly Cal Troop beating Crucifier two zero, uh, Dion Lord uh, uh, beaten by Chris Thunder three one. Does it kind of you know to play to you know to to beat players of that caliber? Does it kind of galvanize you as well here, Andy? Kind of like give you kind of a, a lot of wind in your sails coming to kind of matchups like this? Yeah, I think so. I, I think it's certainly going to help Chunter as well because he. he... Ch Chunter has got a little swagger about him. I think he thinks he's the greatest player ever in a nice way, right? I don't think it's a, an arrogant thing, but I think um, beating people then just reinforces that viewpoint. And, and maybe that means he's even more hyped for the games, which is great. It's all about confidence, isn't it? That's the yeah, thing. It's it all is, about confidence. Yeah. Confidence is such a, a key difference maker, isn't it? It's absolutely massive. And um, you know, as always, chat. You know, we uh, you 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 give us confidence in your kind of predictions here. Make sure to let us know who you think is going to be joining the other five qualified players uh, that are there in grand finals next weekend. Is it going to be Cal Troop? Is it going to be Crystal Hunter? Let us know in the chat uh, as we dive back into the action for the last time this weekend. Who will be the victor and joining the rest of the squad there for our grand finals next? 
Uh, we go into the matchup one more time. If you play, fellas, into the play we go. <laughs> yeah, here we go. It looks like Coltrip's won the toss and uh, has elected to receive. Uh, that makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, I yeah. think that's what's happened. I think you would choose to receive here and just try and get the uh, early damage, right? The problem is less, yeah, there's, there'll be more players for the one turn. But I think I think you'd receive here, wouldn't you, Andy? Hey, if I was the humans, I'm absolutely receiving here, yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it's odd, because if you were the Skaven, if you've got any chance of turning someone over, you might want to kick first. And I know Junta <laughs> loves kicking first, so maybe... <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they both chose just shook hands before the game. Obviously, yeah. all right. <laughs> it's interesting, yeah. Like it is weird. Like you know, Chunter loves turning people over and like playing on defense, a very aggressive defense. He's only got twelve players, so you know, he, he may he may well think his best his best chance is going on defense first and getting a swift turnover. Uh, but the, this the the problem here that Skaven face against humans is. They've got the guard, they've got the mighty blow, and they've they've got enough strength, haven't they? The, the little strength that they've got with that guard is just enough as just enough of an advantage to like be nearly as big as orcs have fighting them. But then they've just got loads more movement than orcs, so it, it, it they can be a nightmare for Skaven. But by the same token, they're still just you know agility three, and you know things can really easily go wrong for humans. <laughs> In fact, to that part, he's, he's taken the tackle back here, right? In case, in case anything went wrong, yeah. he's just trying to guard, guard a little bit against a blitz. I mean, a blitz would have still been absolutely devastating. There would have been a, a huge hole here um, if there had been a blitz, but you would have stuff to react with at least. I would have liked to have seen him do what Diamond did in that last round when it didn't matter. <laughs> yes. The anti, anti, anti blitz. Yes, I, I personally, when I when I play against Crystal, I play like as absolutely insanely defensive as I can at every opportunity, and everything is the safest thing ever. But I know who Crystal Hunter is now. <laughs> Does Call Troop? I, I I can't remember if Call Troop played much on Blood Bowl two. I, I mean, but, but look, Crystal's played a lot on Blood Bowl three anyway, hasn't he? So if you didn't know who he was, you should know even on Blood Bowl three. So. I don't. Do you remember Coltry from Blood Bowl too much? No, I don't really. No, I'm not. Not sure how much he was. It was in Chalice and stuff, but I think he was in. You know, at least once, but maybe not that big a player. I've got a feeling he's more tabletop. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Disregard. Errata. <laughs> errata. <laughs> it, there's a guy in front of the ogre here. If the ogre boneheads, there's going to be a hole. Yes. Junta's got a guard. Yes. There's still a hole. <laughs> I don't think. I, I think if you're playing super safe, you don't throw the block. I I know you really want to throw the block, and, and I probably do. But no. is that two two removals. Yes, yeah. the removal. Junta's down to and nine. Yeah, it does not up all that. Wow. So that's. I mean, that's a pretty brutal first turn, isn't it? Two removals. That's already. You know, if if uh, if Crystal practiced, you know, Uber Bowl, he would uh, he'd be well used to defending with these many players instantly. To be honest, he doesn't need to do that because Skaven end up in this situation often anyway, don't they? You know, it's it's maybe something like somebody who used Orcs could try, uh, you know, could practice starting down players just to get better. I think that's a, a really honestly a genuinely great point to come out of this cast. But yeah, people who play Skaven do not need any more practice playing down men because. <laughs> This happens every other game, doesn't it? Instant two removals. How many I mean, the humans have got thirteen, right? So Chunter would need yep. to kill three. Does do you think Chunter I mean no I don't I was gonna say, do you think Chunter goes for, for damage? No, Chunter goes for Chuntery things like God. Face everybody, go for the ball. That is you know, that's that's Chunter's plan A. When Chunter's plan B doesn't work, he bases everybody <gasps> and goes for the ball. Oh my goodness. Why? <clears throat> Puts in the re-roll and it fails. <coughs> oh my goodness. We might see a huge foul here. I, I don't hate this at all, right, with 13 players. Yep. Um, it's not integral to the one turn, is it, the Juggernaut Roger? But it's it's pretty good. So you're getting to three dice mighty blow the gutter runner. 
is an interesting option, isn't it? You could three dice tackle him, or you could three dice mighty blow him. You really want to kaz him, that's the thing, isn't it? Just knocking him over is not really setting your world on fire, is it? Whereas kazzing him is incredible. This is a foul. Do you go for the tackle or the mighty blow here, Andy? Uh, I'd go for the mighty blow, because I want the tackle back, because I, I know I'm going to do the foul. I'm doing the foul. I'm in. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I too would go for the mighty blow. You've got a really decent chance of getting the power on three dice. And and you, that's the thing, you don't want him knocked over. You want mighty him blow dead. breaks. Mighty blow, mighty breaks, blow would have broken the armor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, even, even without, I mean, and that was a good point, the uh, the, the the tackle back. But, you know, even, even disregarding that, I would have 100% just, I want this gut run out. I don't want to knock, I don't want to tickle them, you know? You, you, yeah. you've, got, you've got to get these guys out if you're going to beat Hunter, you know, pretty much. So... Well, anyone with, with Skaven, you know. Really, the Skaven team is the gutter runners. And it's one of the reasons why I don't like them in res as much. The, the new costings for the team, you know, if if you're going with a Rat Ogre, it's really hard to get four gutter runners because with the throwing being nerfed, you know, you're, you're almost reliant on this thrower to, to, to do uh, one turns because, you know, if it's if it's a deep kick and you, you just, you're just screwed, right, unless you have to throw it and then... Good runners are like a four plus to throw the ball now, that's, which think, is uh, not uh, good. That's what we're seeing in, in NAF tournaments now. We're seeing 11.55, oh, you see 11.50 and then tiered down from that, you get extra cash. So Skaven are an 11.55 team. Same with Necro. They they both need exactly 11.55 to get what they need. And and maybe maybe that's something that yeah, the, the people running this, you know, Nacon might want to go away and consider for the next tournament. Yeah, we've seen... Yeah. Underworld being so incredibly strong. Why? Because we, we we will play 16, 20 to 24 turns if we have to. Yeah. So maybe um, we're not balancing this like a NAF tournament. We're balancing this like it is online. Mm. Well, what's, he, what's even funnier about, you know, Underworld's predictable dominance in this format is they're even they're actually even worse than they normally are, right? Because there's no star players, there's no inducements of any kind, they're not even getting bribes, and they're still fully dominant. <laughs> it's just, they're so good, they're so, they're so clearly far and away the best team on tabletop. And, you know, that's even with all of this tiering. Regardless of tiering, they're, they're head and shoulders above every race. It's it's actually, you know, unbelievable. And, uh, you know, maybe, maybe individual tournaments w will try and tier them a, a bit worse. But people aren't, you know, tournament organisers aren't doing it enough to, to stop Underworld being far and away the best choice at nearly every single tournament they take part in. <laughs> And I thought they were clearly the best here. I, it was it was literally only because, you know, I I thought I thought I didn't have the experience with them. But you know what? The, the more I the more I watch these games, the more I wonder how much that would have been a factor. They're just so strong, aren't they? They're just so unbelievably, remarkably strong that maybe I don't know. I mean, maybe everyone should use them. I mean, I did say that. I did say that. <laughs> the fifty six planes should be, you know, fifty six uh, underworld teams. Uh, really, if if everybody you know took this seriously, like a you know, like a you know full time job, and they you know got thousands and thousands of dollars for playing this game on the regular, apart from this uh, this one this one special tournament, you know, if if people were if people were doing tournaments like this all the time, I'm sure people would really want to you know specialize in the world and and be good with them because they are they are the best team, and it's you know you're you're just shooting yourself in the foot if you're not an expert on Underworld. Really, or you're doing yourself a disservice winning tournaments. Yeah, you've got to be you've got to be an expert with Underworld. I mean, I think, I mean, I think you do. Yeah, I think you should be an expert with Underworld because, you know, like Call Troop here, he's done great with humans. You know, we've got we've got the top four. They, they've all got different races. There's only one Underworld, but a lot of those do specialize more, right? Diamond, we've seen play Orcs all season. Nearly got top two of the ladder. And Strider plays lizards loads isn't he, on tabletop, so those two are pretty much, uh, you know, kind of specialists in those. Hiru plays a lot of dwarves, so you know, so maybe maybe those three do have that much experience with those teams that, that it makes them a better choice than Underworld, than Underworld for them. But you know, if they were just as skilled with Underworld, Underworld would be the choice for them, hundred percent. Ooh, that makes it a bit harder to get a three dice. I guess you could put the guard in and, and then hit the guarder to get a three dice. 
Where's, where's he going to blitz here? I, I'd blitz the guard with the mighty blow. That's my blitz. And then you're right, then you get the three dice, and then you can also do the foul. Which, mm. Did he foul last run? I, I don't think the, the problem is, there's a gutter runner there. <laughs> <laughs> and and I really want to blitz the gut runner on three dice every single turn. <laughs> like if I if I if I can take out the gut runners here, I can't lose. Is 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 my view on it? Um, yeah. yeah, maybe I'm not valuing gut runners quite highly enough. Maybe okay. not. Two Ds. I mean, I, there's an argument for them just being like the best player in the game, even regardless of cost. I mean, well, okay, not these ones actually, right? U uh, underworld gutter <laughs> runners because they get, they get mutations on normals as well. Um, so, yeah, like, they're they're really good. There's the, you know like war dancers leap isn't as good anymore, is it? So um, so war dancers lose a little bit of value, and then uh, what are they called. God, bull centaurs. Uh, break tackle isn't as good for bull centaurs anymore. Werewolves don't like the mighty blow as much anymore, and it doesn't stack as well anymore. So all of the top top players, like honestly, even regardless of cost, gutter runners could just be the best player in the game. Period. Has he left a chain push in to get the rat ogre into the ball? I think he has. Right. Uh... Yeah, he has. The, the rat ogre can save the ball here. <laughs> this is about when Chunter will see it. He'll find this. Yes, I mean, I, 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 he'd struggle to. <laughs> he'd have to turn the lights off to have a chance of not seeing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the sort of stuff like this is Chunter's meat and drink. Yeah, this is. Uh, it's interesting. I mean, he's got to. He's got to do it. He's just got to. Got to it's yeah. a, it's actually a bit tricky, right? He's got to really run around. To, to make this good. But, um... but there is actually a question of, you know, like, you know, just because you should doesn't mean, sorry, could doesn't mean to say you should. Um, you know, that's going to get your rat ogre almost certainly counter surfed. Oh, he's doing it. Yeah, he's doing it. <laughs> he's doing it. Right, here he comes. <laughs> there was never any doubt. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> there was literally never any doubt. Oh, he puts in the re roll as okay. well. Okay. So he's got the first piece that he needed. Hmm. I think Cold Troop's got a slight, like, moment of realization going, oh, oh no. Oh, <laughs> and this is no. the catcher as well, isn't it? This is the catcher, so it doesn't even yeah. matter about these two assists. Gets the pow. It just needed the push. Gets it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, There's nobody through to hit. The most reliable big guy in the game. <laughs> oh. Uh, I oh, no. another one. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Chunder just used all of his rerolls. <laughs> I mean, he'd already used one. He only had two left. He used both his rerolls on that player. Abject failure. Oh no! Poor Chunter. Oh dear. I love that play as well. I like. I. I. I it's. It's the. It's the most chunter play I've seen today. Yeah. He's always doing it. Yeah. Yeah. It was. And that's. It's what. It's what. Yeah. You know. It is the whole Jeff Goldblum thing, isn't it? <laughs> you know. Like. <laughs> you know. He was always going to go for it, but look how much out of position it takes him. You know. He's. He's got six players here packed in, completely packed in. His rogue is exposed, not next to anybody to uh, activate him. And then he's got a minimal screen here. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's maybe he's going to cost him. This is going to hurt. And he's Jeff no, Goldblum. No, Santa from Exeter, of course. Crystal <laughs> Hunter was just, was just thinking so much about whether he could. He never stopped to think about whether he should. <laughs> How can you not know that's what that's I meant when I said Jeff Goldblum? Come that's on. That's a Jurassic Park reference, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I didn't even watch films. Yeah. How can anybody not know the Jura a Jurassic Park reference? Even Elliot would know Jurassic Park references. Ah, <laughs> oh, Jurassic Park. Ah, oh, Jurassic Park. <laughs> Which year was that? That's a good question. Why? And what was it the top film of the year? If not, why not? <laughs> okay, I'm all over this. Uh, 1993, <laughs> I think it was. Oh, is it 1994? Wow. 
92. It, no, it's 93, 93. It was early 1990s because I was about 12. <laughs> My love okay, of Nando's it? hadn't quite kicked in yet, but I was aware of the spicy chicken. I just hadn't fully <laughs> grasped it was, quite how tasty it was. Okay, right. 1993. It was the year Jurassic Park came out. Chat, what was the biggest oh, grossing movie of that year? Oh man, same year as Braveheart. Oh my god, that's amazing, isn't it? Braveheart and Jurassic Park in the same year. You, oh, you could just about in that year watch both films. Jurassic Park. And didn't Braveheart go on for like seven hours or something? <laughs> I seem to remember it being pretty long, yeah. I think I, I think I've shot myself in the foot here because I think I think Jurassic Park may have been the biggest grossing movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's, it surely it's got a good chance, hasn't it? Well, okay, Something's okay. Going to be pretty special to beat it. But there are two movies in second and third place that are so different from each other and from the first one, though. That I'd love to hear suggestions of number two and three in the list. Terminator Two was around that time. T Two was around that area. I think I think T Two was ninety two. Yeah, I think 92 as well. That's, that's terrible to, to, to like be that precise, but I think it was, yeah. Well, The Bodyguard, that's good. That's, that's pretty different to Jurassic Park, isn't it? Oh, Terminator 2 was 91. Oh, wow. Mate, Schwarzenegger Howard. was on a roll early 90s. He was living, he was living his best life. <laughs> he really was, yeah. Predator, T, the, T, oh, the Terminator movies, gosh, almighty. <laughs> so good. Oh man, I can't believe, I can't believe Chunt has just dropped all of his re-rolls now. He's got to get that gutter runner out and he's got to try and somehow force the humans to score. I don't think you force the humans scoring now, but I do think you've got to do something with that gutter. Dig it out now, otherwise it gets surfed and killed. Yeah, so what you've got to do is you've realised, you know, look, you're, st you're not stopping the score. What you have to do is you have to get yourself a two turn chance. So you have to, you have to plan ahead a few turns and, and try and think, you know, how do you get the board into a state where you can possibly force him in? And it's not easy. It's really not easy. But uh, he's got to, He's got to try his best. I thought Predator was eighty six. I, 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 I put it, we'll put it on record here. I still think that it is probably one of the greatest action films of all time. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, hundred percent. Love Predator. It's one of those ones that I watch it every time. I, you know, there's ever a random opportunity to watch it. I will always watch Predator. It. It's so good. Hey, Dylan. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I've used the emoji of them clasping hands and tensing muscles about a thousand times. <laughs> yes. So good. So good. Incredible. So good. Uh, the chat's coming in. I mean, there's some great suggestions. I've, de I've seen. Okay, I'll, I'll go for it. Number two on the list was Mrs. Doubtfire. So yeah, some of you guys oh. got that. Mrs. Doubtfire was a, was a big one. Um, yeah. Some some big movies that year. Uh, <laughs> sorry, it wasn't it wasn't Wallace and Gromit and the Wrong Trousers. I'm afraid that was not one of the highest grossing <laughs> movies that year. <laughs> the Wrong Trousers. <laughs> Ninety three, Steve. Ninety three. Jurassic Park. I don't think Chunter is going to try and force the score. Sorry to talk about the game for a second. I don't think he's oh, going to force the doesn't score. Doesn't look like it does. No, no. just just that. unless this was his plan. Right, this could have been Step A in his plan. Because I think he had to formulate a plan to, to you know to get back in two turns, and, and maybe this was it. Right, back to the films. Um. <laughs> Did they choose to play in red and blue, by the way, or is um, is this a? Oh no, sorry, I had that on from the last game. Oh, thanks, thanks, Andy. In the last <laughs> game was uh, Crystal versus the Omlord, wasn't it? And they were both red, so I, I had it on for the that because they had to have that on. But yeah, Quadrup's all white. Yeah, good spot. Thank you, Andy. Chunter's play. Chunter's now um, gone from being team blue to being team red. <laughs> yeah, easier um, to watch, isn't it? Well, that's the right I dealt with. Yeah, you to carry that. I don't know. I think you know because you're not stopping the score. You've got two four pluses to get him back, so no. And you don't need him for the one turn because you've got no rerolls, so you're not scoring the one turn anyway. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I think that's I think that's a pretty easy non-apple. I think if he still had three rerolls, he, he probably apples it right, thinking that he'll score the one turn. But I think I think zero rerolls to three is that you know a big difference on the uh, on the one turn equity. You might be able to force and a little bit of something here, not like forced in, but if you dive those remaining five, especially if you could dodge those two out as well, you might make the humans feel a little uncomfortable. You could uphill you could uphill the ogre right to get this guy out. Oh, but then it doesn't free doesn't free uh this guy, but it would give him a two plus dodge out. I, I think I, I think I blitz my way out. Like move mm. the gutters, gutters first, and blitz. Because unless you're blitzing what corner screen using a random line wrap. Hmm. Oh. Interesting. So chunter has got an entirely different game plan. I don't know what it is, but he's got an entirely completely different damage. I mean, yeah, again. Yes, but it, but it's bizarre against thirteen humans. Like you're trading yeah. tackle and or mighty blow hits every turn. Uh, yeah, no, I, I I mean I I don't understand what Chunter's plan is. Look, that would have worked if he would started with that blitz. I really like that. I really like blitzing with this guy and then getting as much up as possible. Uh, you know, if you if you intersect his team here, um, you know, play there. Gutter could have gone through here, four plus with dodge, and then a two plus without. He could have had three gutters, an alignment, and a blitzer, and I, I wouldn't have hated it. And like, especially if you're just going to give up the gutter hit anyway, right? Like, <laughs> like if you you know just clear out with the gutters if if that isn't your plan, I think. Interesting. To, yeah, it's a shame we can't talk to them, but it'd be interesting to find out what Chunter is sort of thinking now. Because yeah. he's clearly got a different mind, uh, plan in mind. Yeah. I mean, I'll certainly ask him after <laughs> after the game what the <laughs> what the hell he was thinking. But you know, it's one of those things. You know, like you, you, you he's got to have some plan. But I just neither of us can fathom what it is. It's yeah. it's weird, isn't it? And what always makes it more bizarre is like. He's also an incredibly good player. Yeah, we're good players. So you would think, well, yeah, we could all find out what that plan is together. Nope. No idea. Absolutely no idea. Just to run away. Yeah, think... <laughs> just run away. Like just, you're not you're not even forcing the score now and you're trading mighty blow hits for not. Run away. Yeah, really odd. Really I mean like it's super odd. And you know, like uh when you look at the you know, the the, the four best that uh the the I pointed to, in my opinion, and three of them are out. <laughs> um, I do like, you know, the kind of safe, sensible plays. You know, that that's what I value. So they were the people that I liked the most. And uh, but, you know, Olivier Dulac is is the tabletop guy, isn't he, with Skaven? And now somebody said he was a bit wild and crazy, but then Crystal said that he wasn't. Like he'd been told he wasn't as crazy as Chunter, but I saw him play one game and he was absolutely as crazy as Chunter. So. <laughs> I'm not sure about that, but uh, you know, some, but these guys, you know, win tournaments and do, you know, do great, don't they? So you know, you don't have to, you don't have to think like a, you know, a, a conservative, you know, safe moves first kind of coach all the time, do you? Like, obviously, these guys don't just not make safe moves first, but they, they like, they like to, you know, do somewhat higher risk, high reward, don't they? Yeah, I, I've played Olivier. Um, I did a, a series pre. World Cup, where I played him, I think, like about four times. Like, every game was a draw, <laughs> and it was Skaven versus Corn. And he, the, the thing that struck me about him, and so, like why he was so good, was he was able to flick very you know, quickly between um, ultimate pressure, complete screen, ultimate pressure, complete screen, and, he, and and whichever was the right thing to do at whatever point, he just did that, and it was he was so good. It mechanically was very sound. Uh, very very strong player but it was the ability to swap was the thing that really got my attention i was just thinking about that as well for you both as well as, as players are you, do you think adaptability is one of the greatest like attributes you can kind of have as a 
as a blood bowl player and i mean and how much of it is how much of it is is instinctive now as well obviously kind of you can see the the quick maths and and and, and turns that you got you know you both kind of very quickly kind of dissect when you're kind of thinking about next movements is a lot of it instinct now or is it are you still kind of looking at every angle every time well fun, funnily enough that's one of the biggest uh, one of the biggest uh, problems you face is like when you're playing particularly rather than watching mm -hmm. is is the uh, tunnel vision you know you like you kind of think of an idea and then you think like you know say this guy has to dodge but it turns out if you're watching it you'd be like no he doesn't have to dodge you could you could block this other guy so he wouldn't have to dodge Just, you know something like that it's really hard to say but you you get something fixated in your head when you're playing um really often tunnel vision is, is is probably the biggest the biggest like you know bane of, of good players existence i guess and most of it i would say is instinctual and stuff yeah after all these years you you spot patterns like instantly and uh, and stuff like that and as far as adaptability goes it's interesting because it, it depends how you how you rate somebody right because if you've got andy and let's say he's played five thousand games um andy who's you know you could say andy who's played um God, how many? <laughs> I, can't, I can't do maths. 200 games with each race. Yep. Okay, he's more adaptable. He may be a, a better rounded coach, mm -hmm. but he wouldn't be as good with Underworld as, as an Andy Devo who played 5,000 games with Underworld. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, it's, it's just fact, right? Well, I mean, are, are, you, are you making as well an initial, I mean, to about adaptability, are you making an initial change to the way in which you're, you're playing every time, courtesy of just simply the race you're going up against? I mean, have you got a kind of a set way of like, okay, this is where I like to play? Or is it, oh, I'm playing this team, I must set up in this way every time? Like, how, how does it tend to, how does it tend to work for you both when it comes to preparing? Is that the initial kind of decision, whether or not you're going to play a certain way, depending on the, the faction you're up against? So, so I think for yes. me personally, okay, I always God. think of, yeah, yeah, I think I think of Blood Bowl as um, the, the, all the teams, uh, Adam, are on a spectrum from mm -hmm. Agility teams on one end to hybrid teams, uh, sorry, to bash teams on the other. And a lot of them then will sit in a hybrid uh, line. There are a couple of teams that we've not seen in this tournament, which are specialist teams that sit outside that. But for the vast majority of teams, they're on this spectrum. And actually what it means is that you get any particular matchup and you put those two teams on that spectrum and say, which one's the agility team, which one's the bash team. So for example, in this matchup here, Skaven are very heavily an agility team anyway, and humans sit almost smack in the middle of that uh, agility through to bash spectrum. So when humans are playing, you have to learn how to play, be the bash coach, because sometimes you're playing against Gaven and you want to try and you bash them. Sometimes you're playing against Orcs. You are the agility team in that matchup. And you need to learn to adapt. So when you've played lots and lots of games, you know, if the Andy Davo had played 5,000 games of humans, I would know every single matchup inside out, backwards and forwards, <laughs> yeah, right? of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but if but if I've only played two hundred games, what I'm drawing on is the innate intuition that knows that that is the statement that I'm playing towards. I might not necessarily know how to execute it. You see the difference? Yeah, yeah, of course, I definitely do. And also, yeah, also there's not just the racial matchups, right? There's also the like this is this is a bit different because there's not that much variance between the actual teams. The the, the, the racial matchups in this is is. Is a real big determinant factor. But when you're playing on a ladder and stuff, when you have higher TV teams, you know you could have a human team that had, for example, ten guard, or a human team that had two guard and stuff like this. And you could have like you know all sorts of all sorts of weird and wacky teams. So then you just have to like make an individual assessment based on the teams themselves. And I guess we've seen it here to an extent, right? We we've got Key and Dare only had four guard on his team. And Cruz had six guard on his team, mm -hmm. so so there's that element of things as well, just the actual individual teams. And and then okay, so he's got the catch. And if you want to go even further than that, which yeah, Jimmy's absolutely right. You then say, okay, um, how's this matchup going? Because if I'm the bash team like my orcs, and I have only got six players left, I'm not the bash team. <laughs> I'm just a miserable, <laughs> bad team. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 oh, he, did he, he got a he got a reroll from the uh, oh, oh, wow. leader? He's got his leader. He's got his leader. Oh my goodness! So he had a reroll for the one turn. Oh wow! Ooh. We should return Ooh, to maybe, this. Maybe he could have. Maybe he could have appled the. Uh, maybe he could have yeah, appled the. The right oh, over here. He's got this in. This is in. Look. He's got a chance. He's got a chance. No. Oh, 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 oh,
<laughs> oh, oh, the, the chunter, the chunter play that he tried before with a with a rogue. You know that he spent two rerolls on that turn. If he just saved those rerolls, you, you know he's he was almost nailed on to get the one turn in there, wasn't he? It was it was not the best defense. Mm. Uh, he, he did have to do a one, a one dice block to to get there. So you know it wasn't great, but he, he could have hit a power, couldn't he, on the one D? So yeah. that was. And he was so close to scoring that one turn. We, I mean, so, I mean Chunt are great at one turns. You know, Chunt, you say Chunt has spent you know a, a, such a long time as Skaven now and has the, you know, the, the, the hundreds of hours worth of time playing with them. When it comes for most players, I guess when they kind of start Blood Bowl, they're kind of thinking, okay, which is the faction I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really kind of commit to and kind of spend my time trying to perfect and trying to kind of work with. At what point usually does it come that if if a player does? I'm obviously talking kind of like very much, you know, kind of across the board, you know, kind of a bog standard person who might be thinking about changing up, um, you know, where they kind of like put their allegiance race wise. Is there a certain moment that that happens? Is it very hard to kind of like shake and think, right, I'm actually, I'm going to put these, I'm going to put the humans aside for now and I'm really going to focus on underworld. I mean, I guess when a new one is introduced like underworld, that's when you kind of go, okay, that might be an incentive for me to change things up now and really start to look at things differently. Does it come a certain point, you think, like a certain loss? Is it kind of just a case of a case by case basis? I mean, in, in your experience, what's been a kind of a, a big difference maker for some players to kind of change things up? Well, yeah, do you know what? That, that's actually really a really good tie into Blood Bowl 3 because now Blood Bowl 3 has this season system where each season they release a new race into the into the team, uh, into the game. Now, those races already exist on tabletop, you know, so that, like we're catching yep. up to tabletop. Um, there's currently 15, 15 races. So, you know, what's happened is, you know, each season that comes out, people play the hell out of the new team. So, so that's already like, you know, helping a bit in that, you know, helping people try those kind of things out. Uh, not it's not so nice when there's it's it's undead and everybody's playing undead, but you know, <laughs> yeah. undead are a, a, a pretty oppressive team at Law TV. And if if people were allowed to use undead in this tournament, I think we'd have seen a lot of undead, like a lot of undead. Um, so I'm kind of happy that, that they weren't out for this, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. I guess it just varies person to person. I, I think you know. In tabletop, a lot of it depends on you know what you like the models of and stuff. You know, like I think I think yeah. people got into Blood Bowl from Warhammer and stuff. You know, and it's like you know Hero Quest and stuff. You know, you'd see this guy and you'd be like, oh wow, the you know the orcs look really cool. And so you play an orc team, and then just when the more you play, you know maybe you you have like a, a game against somebody and you think, oh okay, that looks interesting and that sort of thing. Uh, people people do generally tend to hoard teams. They buy loads of teams and hoard them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! There's somebody you, you're not going to believe this. Uh, how, how many? How many teams? Right. So a team costs how much, Andy? Do you reckon fifty, fifty quid or something? Are you talking about painted teams? or un unpainted? Unpainted. But, yeah, thirty to fifty quid for a team. In fact, fi no, it's fifty because a lot of them don't have all the stuff. So let's call it fifty quid a team. Fifty quid a team, and then you know you've got to store them somewhere in your house, and preferably paint them so you don't just have like a massive. You know, a massive collection of metal men. So yeah, how how many how many teams do you reckon <laughs> the guy with the most teams has? And, and by the way, Adam, there are twenty about roughly twenty eight teams, different teams that you could play, right? So you would only need one of each in theory. Um, oh wow, okay, people, okay. Some people like multiple teams, right? Because because all the miniatures, some of the miniature manufacturers make some pretty cool miniatures. So it's not unconceivable to have you know a, a second team of your favorite race or, or whatever. Um, yeah, or maybe a third, right? If you if you really really like them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, how many? Is it is it who I think it is, Jimmy? Is he is this oh, person yeah. Italian? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. I, blah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I know the answer. <laughs> people people can people can guess in chat how many how many teams he has. <laughs> of the twenty eight, is this? Well, no, well, how many how many physical metal teams do you think he owns? Yeah. Oh, so there's, there's no point in having more than 28, but I've got about 30. <laughs> and is this, is this like, a, like an official record, or is this just like a community knows the answer to this? It's a community knows the answer to this, yeah. yeah. Okay. Nobody said that they've got more. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> yeah, I'd be very surprised <clears throat> if somebody had more. <laughs> if somebody's had more and keeping to themselves, that's... Uh... Oh, that's... what would I... I mean, pff, I don't, I mean 70? Uh, I don't know. That's a lot, isn't it? I mean, that is a lot, right? Three times more than you'd ever need. Is that, am I being, have I gone way above and beyond there? No, not even close. 
Oh, even close. No, come on. 50, 50 quid a go? <laughs> yeah. Time is more than 70. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? Plus paint. Well, hang on. So, so, so painted, right? They're worth two or three times that. A, paint, yeah. a, a decent painted uh, Blood Bowl team, 150 quid. 100 to 150 quid, right? They're, that's what they'll go for on eBay. Okay, so let's say, mm. so, okay, I'm doing maths. So 150 for a, for a painted team, right? Yeah. Times 70 yeah. times three, did you say? Oh, no, no, no sorry. No, so, so, times yeah, 70. Well, so 150, if they were 150 quid each and he, he, he'd only got 70 teams, that would be 10,500 pounds. 10,500 grand. Okay, it, it's, it's more than that. <laughs> oh, stop it. Okay, um, <laughs> 78. Oh, my God. Yes, you're looking at 50, 15 k, fifteen grand, fifteen grand per hundred teams. You will take, right? So how many teams has he got? I don't know. Yeah. What's what's, what's the chat saying? All right, yeah. all right. <laughs> sixty-nine, I'm wild, dude. I'm gonna give you a wild number, more or less than three hundred. Oh crumbs, man. Okay. Uh, well, if it was three hundred, that would work out as what? Uh, what's my? What? I don't know if they're all painted. I, I, I no, they're not. About a quarter of them are painted, actually. Oh my god! It's I mean, a lot. It's a lot. All right, I'm going to say. Shall, shall I drop the bomb? Shall I drop the bomb? Drop it! Drop it! Like it's no, hot. This is this. <laughs> this is two months ago. So he's probably added at least five more. <laughs> <laughs> but two months ago, he had 105 painted teams of 446 teams. Oh my goodness! What? What? Oh, oh, sorry. He bought he bought eight more that day, so that was four hundred and fifty four that day. <laughs> so, with, and that's two months ago. <laughs> so I, I'm doing the maths now, and with so before anything is painted, that's twenty two thousand seven hundred pounds. Yep. Wow. So, and then you say you say how many of those are painted? About a hundred. Okay. Right. So three hundred and fifty times fifty. Gives you uh, seventeen and a half grand of just metal in your house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and then, then one fifty um, times a hundred. Yeah, is that right? Is, and yeah, uh, is another fifteen grand on top. The twenty so thirty uh, thirty two and a half k plus. Oh, so he likes he likes blood ball. <laughs> he yeah. likes blood ball. Yeah, I mean, uh, understatement of the year, Jimmy. Understatement of yep. the year. Yep, yep. He's also yep. a very nice guy. If you ever get a chance to meet him, really cool guy. Really, really yep. cool guy. Lovely uh, fella. There's and there's also there's also like uh, how many games of Blood Bowl people play in tabletop. You know, like different tournaments. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's a there's a lovely German fella who he's he's played like about 180 games this year in tabletop. Just gone to about like 40 tournaments. But, you know, and that's that's quite that's, are these that's quite that's quite a lot. Are these on like display? Are they in cases, kind of like in a dark room, kind of put away? Like, what, how, do you know how they're kind of like um, exhibited at all? He's got them all in like uh, cases. He's, he's he's shared pictures of them, like the cases, and uh, you know, like like you know, kind of like glass cabinet. Oh, he's got to re all that. Um, yeah, he's, he's posted like loads of pictures of them stuff in my like, Discord and that, and I guess other places as well. It's it really is incredible. <laughs> he takes out certain ones for for certain like special days, like oh, it's our anniversary, so guess who's come out to play? <laughs> 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 oh, that's well funny. It's Easter, so guess who's come to play? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. That's really funny. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that, that's the hobby, you know. Like, and and so you know. That's what people love, isn't it? You know, and, and that's why people play the races that they play more than anything. You know, I think I think Chunter, uh, you know, he, he probably settled on Skaven pretty rapidly, right? You know, that's just what he liked, and that's what he wanted to play. But then other people like Rolex, they they're like, you know, okay, I'll 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 just play everything and I'll I'll collect everything. <laughs> yes. Rolex, what do you like? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I I I rate I rate collecting. I think it's one of these things that's definitely had a. Research, but would you say that we had it's had a resurgence collecting and ge I mean generalizing it here. Um, I mean, there's always been there's always been collectors of things, but I think, um, even more recent, that pop culture wise, I think it's definitely kind of people are more inspired oh, no. to get into it now. Um, we, we might, yeah, well done, Chunks. Uh, bloody hell, um, <laughs> <laughs> just left two dice on the ball with tackle, like just smashed me in the face. Don't bother counting squares, that's for nerds. <laughs> <laughs> I do everything by eye. Do you have to roll this? 
he has used the leader reroll, so he doesn't have to reroll that anymore. But if he's leaving a hit on the ball, he probably does. Well, he is the guard, and um, he is, guard, yeah, yeah, the guard. Oh. Frozen. He rerolled it and oh. failed. So. Oh right. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough then. Yeah, he's got he's got two Ds on the ball here. Is it a go for it? It looks it. I'm going to measure yeah, this by one. eye. Who counts squares? Yeah. Um, two, five, seven, one GFI. Yep. For that one. Although, actually, you can chain it. Look, you've got a, you've got nearly a T shape. Two squares in front of the guard. You're going to take the whatever it is that's inside our pit, inside Junta's half, make it into a T shape. You can push the guard across, then there's no go for it. Yep. Yep, that's pretty nice. Yeah, dice collectors. People collect the dice. Yeah, that's a good point there, Raging. Yeah, people collect the dice even there. So he doesn't chain him forward for the air. I really like chaining him forward. Really like chaining him forward. It, yeah, that was... I'd go so far as that was a mistake to not chain him, right? Yep. I guess unless he's going to chain this guy free, but then even then he's got block. Uh, ah. I think it was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no. Do you, know, do you know one thing that I collected that I've still got no idea what they are actually for or did? Do you remember Tazos? Do you remember those? No. Oh. Those weird little things used to get in crisp packets. They used to connect and they had like different cartoon characters on them. Same as like, I guess, like Frosty's bicycle reflectors. It's the weird things you just collect thinking, what? these are pointless, but I'm really into it. <laughs> Chat, back me. Uh-oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, people know. I think I might be a little bit too old for that. <laughs> Tazos, a.k.a. not pogs. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like bootleg pogs. Exactly what they were. <laughs> oh. He's going for this double GFI hit. Rerolls it, does nothing. Push it into tackle at least. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty nice, isn't it? Getting on the tackle. And then maybe he can come round the back with a bit more as well. Now, I guess the one thing you can do here, of course, now is, is pop the guard free that you've got your cursor almost over. Stand yeah. this guy up. Now you can stick a guard somewhere. I don't really know where, you, where I want this guard particularly. Standing yeah, maybe he's up here, there. right? Up yeah, yeah. He, here or here? Yeah. Where would I go? Given the choice, I'd probably go down, yeah, down a little bit, I think. Yeah. Because the gutter probably wants to escape sideways. Oh, so he comes round the back. Okay. I mean, now the now the gutter definitely wants to come down here, doesn't he? Away from tackles, he's going to have to keep touching through tackle, but he can also just get instantly chained. Uh, but then it's, he can't deal with that guard. It's not. It's not obvious. It's not an obvious solution. This is it. This is looking pretty. Uh, pretty scary. Guard storm vermin. This is my first thought. Guard storm vermin blitzes the guy that he's just moved into there. That pushes the gutter runner um, behind the wrestle gutter, and now it's three two to get out. Yeah, it's two dodges. Yeah, instantly. Can you do it on a double go for it? I mean, this is counting squares. Which yeah, is... yeah, double GFI. Yeah. Okay. That makes that makes the opposite box, but going the other way. Oh, he's going to push into the gutter. Oh, it's a one D now. He's going to push into the ball carrier. Yeah. Into the rare wrestle. Wrestle. Yeah. <laughs> into the root wrestle. Into the block and then and surf then, him to yeah. get away. Oh, he's gonna do, yeah. He's going to into the ball, into the wrestle, wrestle into the tackle on two D uphill. Into the wrestle? No, no. Into the into the ball carry in on and yeah, surf. Sorry. Right? No, he's not. Oh, I thought he just surfed, and then if he one D surfed, he gets away from the tackle. But well, now it's now it's. Oh dear. Oh, oh no, dear. Chunter. No. No, I, I I think it was much better to chain to chain into the cat chain chain the block into the catcher. Yeah. And then one D surf him, and then that gives you a two plus out for the other guy. Or, or just score, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just score. Just one D. Get a surf and score. Yeah. Oof. This ball carrier. He's gonna surf both gutters here. Yes, yes, he can yeah. do. Yeah, both gutters get binned. Oh dear. 
just needs to put the line behind the gutter that's on the sideline, catch it into gutter into ball, and then that's out, and then ball carrier gets yep. punched out. Yep, double double gutter surf and foul the third one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. Well, I did say oh, Coltrude was going to win this one. I, and you were like, no, yeah. no, Chunt is going to win it. This is making a mockery. I thought Chunt would get it done, honestly. I had faith. I had faith. It shows, shows, shows that, you know, you should never believe in anybody. <laughs> Yeah, he's going for the double gutter surf. Okay, he's got to commit the tackle to get this into. No, he hasn't got to commit the tackle. Oh, he took the power. Oh, oh no, that is that the surf. Okay, cast. Got. He's still got his apothecary. No, he did take the power. Wow, would not have taken the power there, but he he KO'd him anyway. Oh, and then he uploaded it. Yeah. What? Oh, I would have surfed, wouldn't I'd you? I'd have surfed him both. Like, well. Tempted to. Yeah, because you've got the assist. Wow. Why would you I don't understand why you wouldn't. I don't, I don't see what the advantage of, of, of taking the power there is. Gen genuinely. Oh, I guess the, the ball the ball going in the crowd and then being bad for you, I guess. But like you you have a you have a you have your tackler to react anyway, so I guess that's the thing, right? The ball going in the crowd. If you surf the ball, it's definitely but in the crowd. And then this way, it's probably not in the crowd. And then that means, you know, less chance of, you know, a crazy scatter and him running away and getting away from you. So I guess the, the, that is the, I mean, that has to be the argument against it. But I mean, I think most of us would have surfed him. <laughs> yeah. And it is a guaranteed knockdown versus the one in nine. Yeah. I and mean, he's only got one reroll left. Yeah. Yeah. You All know right. what? Question for chat, there's only 400 people here. How many How many people would have surfed? So surf, no surf. Go on then. <laughs> 2020 hindsight, everybody. I'm, I'm surfing, right? I'm, I'm camp surf. I think we'd all surf, right? And then 11% <laughs> of the time, we'd say, oh, I shouldn't have actually gone for the surf, should I? I should have just taken the power. <laughs> <laughs> That is that is what I think would have happened. Yeah, hundred percent. So Prubo, Morflo, Dementa, Solana, you'd all felt very sad. The rest of you'd have got away with it fine and not realised. <laughs> you could also have felt slightly smug about the fact that you got a double gutter surf, right? The three that you just went, "I'll take the pal, Hancock." Um, no, no <laughs> smugness for you. 89% of the time, you're wrong to take the power, right? Because surfing a gutter is incredible. Like, it's... it's At the moment, Chunt has two players that can win in the game. You could have just made that one. 89% of the time. So I don't think the surf was wrong, or the not surf was wrong. I just think it's personal preference, isn't it? So much of Blood Bowl is personal preference because we just don't have... We don't have Blood Bowl stockfish, and we just can't say, say things are, like, definitively good or bad pretty much ever. You can surf it now anyway. So, yeah, surf when, the body now. yeah, this is a free surf, right? Stick the guard behind, yeah, behind the gutter, um, and then it's just toast. How many can you get here? Could you get three? I can, I, I can see two. <laughs> right. This has become surf for us. You probably could get three, but I mean, I think I would just go for two and, and then play safe. Yeah. If you go for two, you get a bigger gang foul on the remaining gutter. <laughs> 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 so, I think I'd go with two. There is part of this which is oh he's going for it. That the, all you need to do is just get just lift the gutters off because Cold Troop's already winning as well. That's the other big thing out of yeah. all of this. Because yeah, he's exactly, winning, yeah. he just needs to stop Chunter scoring. And the best way to do that is to remove the gutters. I mean, I think I would have gone for the double surf. This isn't so easy to double surf now, is it? But This this was the easier way to get like the single surf, but I, I, I would have definitely gone for the double surf. Oh, I'm taking the thrower. I was taking, I was doing this and taking the thrower out. But um, he's gone. This is a better, this is a safer version of it, I think. Like, yeah, I would, I would have, I would have gone for uh, for surfing that line right and the uh, <laughs> and the thing. Hmm. 
is he on? He's only on one reroll, so he's not going to be jumping over that prone dude. No, it's a bit messy, isn't it? But I still think you just go back and foul now. The best thing that Chuntum is going to want to do, and, it, and it's Chunter, so he's definitely going to do it, is he's going to bobble <laughs> something onto the ball. So you need to yep. you need to now prevent you need to, you need a screen with an air gap around it to stop Chunter doing Chunter stuff. I think you just foul the gutter. Mighty blow runs back and fouls the gutter. Big run up, extra damage. <laughs> Plus one to damage. <laughs> Oh, I feel like that just makes you worse, you know, freeing a player up. Interesting. It's like horns on the blitz. If you've got, you've got to be moving to use horns. Yeah, used to be like that, didn't it? In the old edition of the rules. Mm. When, when did you start playing, Andy? Um, LRB four. I don't remember LRB three at all. Uh, I remember a fair chunk of LRB four, and then it was oh dear, poor chunk. Um, yeah. And then five went and came and went almost like immediately. And then it was six. Yeah. So L R B four was the, was the old horns, wasn't it? Where you needed yeah. the, the square of movement and stand firm stops you falling over no matter what. Oh god, yeah. Okay, he's got a gutter in the end zone, uh, except he failed. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you were technically right. It's just not stood up. Yeah, he's not standing. He's he's in the, he's end, in zone. the end zone. He's not standing, and now surely three these serves. two will get served, and him. He can serve all three of these, and then just don't pick up the ball. In fact, just stay yeah. away from the ball. <laughs> stay yeah. away. Have nothing to do with the ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you've got to take this, unfortunately. Oh, kill him then. Yep, that that's counts okay. as a surf. It's an honorary yep. surf. Yeah, that's acceptable. <laughs> so the the easy solution, yeah, here we go. Yeah, now the ogre's gonna get to do the three. Really. I mean, you see, easy. It's uh, we're relying on a okay. The easy solution is, of course, not to really care about. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you don't just waste time with the ogre. You just yeah. <laughs> not not to really care about surfing anybody, just literally cast everybody a punch. Wow. Wow. And the mighty blow's gonna get to swing here as well, because he's got so many free players. Yeah. I wouldn't have moved that ogre. That was that was doing a job being not stupid. Yeah. Yeah, this is the the last game of the weekend, uh, I believe. Yep. Yeah, it has to be, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Because the other one was Inarian versus Mumenslayer. Mumen yep. Yeah, that's right. And Inarian got it done, didn't he? Yeah, he did. did he? he won. Yeah, he did. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. It only happened <laughs> like two hours ago. Yeah, Inarian definitely did it. My brain is fried as I, oh dear. <laughs> I'm, I, do, you know what, do you know what, lads? I am so looking forward to, to, to catching up together next weekend as well for finals. It's going to be so much fun. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, I can't, I can't actually wait for that. I've been super excited since I, well, that, since I found out. We'll have to get a Nando's on the go there, uh, Andy. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. Yeah, so right, I'm there. Stuff it. Stuff it with as much pineapple <laughs> as available. <laughs> Give it. We'll, we'll, Pineapple we'll, the we'll, hell out of it. <laughs> You're monsters. <laughs> <laughs> they they do actually serve broccoli in, in Nando Land, <laughs> right? It, I don't know why, <laughs> but they do. Oh dear. Oh, oh no. Well, another skill for Chunter. Um reminder for everyone before people sort of sidle out, which is we're gonna be diving going to be live Friday, uh, Saturday and Sunday evening from about five PM I think. Uh, Adam, you got the exact timings? Uh, not to have, I, I, you're absolutely right though. We have next Saturday and Sunday is going to be our grand finals weekend here, which is going to be, uh, as we know, this is a, is a really uh, wonderful thing this weekend uh, that we uh, have able to broadcast an official broadcast of Blood Bowl 3 season finals and it continues next weekend. And um, we're going to be in a studio together and it's going to be a, a real kind of celebration of the community, the game, and the players as well. Six of them being there to kind of compete uh, online to uh, try and win the top cash prize and obviously the, the accolade of being champion 
uh, as well here. But it's um, it's it's hugely exciting, and we'll have all the details for you guys, of course, online. You can find those uh, when you can tune in and check it out. But it'll be very similar, I'm sure, to, to this weekend's uh, broadcast as well. So, uh, yes, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And to, as we said, like with the three of us together, it's going to be a. Uh, it's like the what, what we compare ourselves to. I don't know. Um, the <laughs> Three musketeers. Gonna... Yes. The three amigos. The three amigos. The three. That's, that's... <laughs> yeah, I'll be. I'll take Martin Short. I'll take Martin Short. First three I'm, Star Wars films. Yeah. I'll, ironically, I'll take Martin Short, and I'm six foot four, so that that works perfectly. It works perfectly. Uh, there we have it. There we have it. We have it, guys. We have our uh, sixth uh, official uh, member of our finalists for the next weekend's grand finals. Um, I mean, it seemed there, Andy. Playing it back here, as I'm sure Crystal Hunter uh, will do at some point. Um, what could have been done differently there? What was the real kind of difference in that kind of uh, in that lower bracket round three? So Chunta has a unique style of play, which is crazy, right? And he just went for it. <laughs> um, he rolled a one on the right ogre blitz on the surf on the ball carrier. It didn't work. We, we both caught it in commentary. He was going to do the thing. He went for the thing. And what happens when it goes wrong? He leaves himself incredibly exposed. It went wrong. It goes right, what, 80 something percent of the time. So there's the first one. And then he had um, another by committing all those rerolls because he went for the crazy thing, then didn't get the one turn. So he's then one nil down. So yeah, poor Chunter. He, he also didn't get the KOs back after the uh, half time. I think the Rato didn't come back twice. So yeah, he's just, he's just he was just, a, he was unlucky. Yeah, he was. He it was, but it was always going to be a bit dicey, right? The the humans, you know, they have that mighty blow. They have the guard. They have the tackle. They're going to make it dodgy for you. And yeah, that that, that he did a few like one days and stuff, didn't he? And the the two plus activation. And maybe if he just played safe, but you know, Chunder doesn't play safe, so <laughs> he's always going to live by the sword, die by the sword. So you know, I, I don't think he'll have any regrets. Just that you know, the dice didn't cooperate, and he's not going to change his play style or anything. Is he? He'll, he'll keep on chuntering. Yeah. Keep, keep on chuntering, baby. I mean, we, I mean, for, on the other hand, though, Cal Troop, um, you know, fantastic work. It's been a battle going through the grind of the lower bracket there, qualifying alongside Anarion, going through as our last two players for grand finals. But Andy, undoubtedly, incredibly pleased uh, with the uh, with the victory over over Chunter in his uh, his final opportunity this week. So. Yeah, I, th I thought he was actually played better in that game than he did against um, uh, his previous round opponent, Crucifer, where he was just more solid. He he, he almost accepted that Chunter was going to play that wild, crazy play and therefore played a bit safer. Um, granted, it, you know, he, he nearly got punished with Chunter's um, yeah. chain push onto the ball in the first half. But apart from that, I thought his, his gameplay was very solid and congratulations to him. Massive, massive yeah. congratulations. I mean, let's actually take a look at the brackets here and remind everybody is exactly how it played out this weekend, our first weekend of uh, of season finals action here. You can see here, winner's bracket. Uh, Jimmy, four confirmed players in winner's bracket uh, from yesterday's action. Uh, and uh, all of them different different factions, if I'm not mistaken. And it's going to make for a very uh, exciting next weekend. Yeah, actually all six, right? The, the four yeah. from the winner's bracket are, 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 are distinct from the two from the loser's bracket. So yeah, Hiru on Dwarves, Diamed on Orcs, Stride on Lizards, Art on Underworld. Um, all great players with great teams, yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> let, let me leave you with a stat, which is Chunter has scored seven touchdowns in all of his games. Um, the next closest, I believe, is four when I'm catching up, right? That just shows how aggressively Chunter plays. That's, that is a, a great stat. And you're right. I mean, I'm mean, even look at the top here, like Hiro with like two 1 0 victories to get through to finals, only two touchdowns scored necessary. But I mean, we've, we've seen here like some, some amazing action. Again, we have to say a huge thanks to all the players as well for working together here to ensure they get their games played on time so that the, the official broadcast here can bring you guys at home. Uh, all the uh, all the matchups in an orderly fashion. You can see everything, and we can keep the storyline uh, alive as well of our tournament here. So, uh, big GGs to everyone who took part there. Looking at our loser bracket as well. Here you can see finally we have populated that uh, lower bracket round three with the remaining uh, uh, the remaining games of the two players as well. The four qualifying Anarion and Cold Troop who are waiting in the wings lower bracket round four there for those players who lose their first matchups will join them in the lower bracket round four there um again i've got to ask you guys i mean andy look at the, the, those four there um who uh, went head to head then obviously the two that have qualified um 
obviously Anariot and Kaljuk will be incredibly ecstatic that they are through and they'll be competing <laughs> alongside the aforementioned of, uh, above before. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the, the one that stands out in those two is Inarion versus either Strider or Artemis. So it, that's Black Orcs versus either uh, Underworld or Lizardmen. And as Jimmy and I spoke about it on the, on the last sort of break, I can, I can see Inarion, he can get a result out of either of those games. So maybe Inarion can just squeeze through again. Uh, I'm not sure about the other, the other side because it's humans versus either Dwarves or Orcs. Humans are, are typically outgunned in both of those. So I, I think Call Troop's really up against it, but I think you could see an Aryan sneaking through. Call Troop's been beating the odds all the way through though, right? He got through that NAF kickoff against all the odds to get to the final two. And uh, you know, he, he came up short then, but maybe maybe he won't this time. You know, it could be it could be dwarves again for him, it could be orcs. Neither good for for humans, but he can he can sure roll the dice, can't he? He can he can get some crazy results out of nowhere. So maybe he can get it get the job done and uh, win the whole thing. Yeah, sure, roll the dice. I mean, I mean, what do you think the preparations can be like now for these players who are obviously the six that have gone through this week? Is it going to be grinding as much as possible to kind of like continue to just you know, keep, their, keep, keep their, their palms hot, their hands hot, ready to ready to for action next weekend? Uh, or is it going to be a bit of a, of a breather the next few days just to kind of take, take a moment after what has been an intense weekend here, Andy? So if this was me, I mean, sadly I'm out, but if it was me, uh, what I'd actually be looking to try and do is go back and watch some of the replays of the games that have already taken place. I don't think you're going to get much more about playing more games, but you want to go and look at the right matchups and see what could I have done better to improve my in-game play, uh, and then what, if I'm an Aryan, you know, let's go and look at um, a, a matchup and, and try and work out what would happen, and so I'm, I'm, I'm ready for whatever experience is thrown at me. That's what I would do. Yeah, yeah. I think I think Strider should do some research on on how he plans to beat Artemis, and I feel like Artemis should practice one turns for a week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I think Artemis should do. Um, every, the other people don't really have the one turn chances, um, but I think I think Art should absolutely be affecting the one turn one hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely vital come finals next weekend. Uh, confirmation as well here. Starting time uh, next weekend will be uh, 2.30 in uh, CEST or it'll be 1.30 p.m. Uh, in UK time if you watch from the UK. Uh, so you've got there, obviously, a uh, opportunity there to early on in the afternoon on Saturday, sit down, put your feet up, get comfy, get some snacks in because you're there for the long haul. We've got us three bringing you all the action uh, from season finals where six competitors will go head to head to try and be the champion. Um, chaps, it's been, it's been a fantastic couple of days, isn't it? I mean, Andy, I mean, didn't get through his commiserations again into this, but I mean, it's great to have you here on the team, mate. I mean, how, I mean, how, how much have you enjoyed the weekend thus far? Anyway, Andy. It's been great. And uh, talking about it, the pre-preparation has been good. Getting through the games, it's always good. Like having these tournaments is the thing that Blood Bowl 3 really lacked over the last 12 months. Jimmy, I know you cast all this stuff in CCL. I, we need this. We need this for the game too. It is one of the two pillars. The other is the private leagues. Once we've got both of those in, we'll be laughing. Blood Bowl 3 will be going from strength to strength. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's been amazing. You, you can see the reaction in the streams and everything and in, in all everyone's discords, the buzz around Twitch. Everyone's been loving these games and this tournament and it's, it's fantastic to see Blood Bowl 3, you know, finally taking its place. <laughs> That's right. And we, we must say again, an enormous thanks as well to Nacon for putting this together for us alongside Sinai Studios, of course, and ZQSD, our production partners. Um, it's all coming your way. You guys have been incredible. Thank you so much for being with us the, the course of the last two days and, uh, in, and enjoying everything that we've come out with and all the fun stuff and the action unfolding. And uh, make sure as well, you've seen all those different names, different streamers, players out there right now. Uh, who are at the forefront of the top tier uh, you know, coaches that are playing Blood Bowl 3, make sure to give them a follow. Go and check them out alongside, of course, Jimmy Fantastic and Andy Davo, these wonderful human beings alongside me here. Uh, we have got uh, loads to look forward to next weekend. Make sure to be there uh, for Grand Finals. Uh, we've had a blast. Thanks for being so brilliant. And we look forward to seeing you there. We can't wait to be in the studio, baby. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> we'll have to see it. Uh, Blood Bowl 3. Uh, season finals con uh, continues next weekend. Don't miss it. We look forward to seeing you there. So then take care and goodbye for now.